Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dark Souls from the Dark. I am Marcus, also known as ENB, and today we are going to explore Firelink Shrine. This is actually a really interesting area. Uh, I, I never really thought too heavily about it before, but here we see the ruins of the shrine. I, I wonder like, what the shrine must have once looked like when it was complete. Like You see the, the shattered roof way up there beneath this tree. I don't know. I, ju I just, I, I don't know why. I've never really considered that before. I wonder what Firelink Shrine actually looked about, l looked like when, when it was new. Maybe much like the uh, Undead Chapel up there. I don't know. But first, let's talk to this, this guy right here. The Crestfallen Warrior. He's basically Mr. Exposition. Let's see what he's got going on. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. Huh. Too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are, actually, two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below, in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happened. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on. But I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> he actually said a lot right there uh first of all he said the undead asylum which makes it it seems to imply that there is only one undead asylum last time i talked about how they specifically said it was the undead asylum in the north uh and that there may actually be multiple ones but that could be a quirk of translating from japanese um he seems to imply that there is only one another really important point is that you're not the first uh, he knows about the undead asylum. He knows that you've come here. He knows why you've come here. You are not the first one uh, So have multiple chosen undead escaped from that same asylum or is it a case where there are multiple dimensions? We know there's there's kind of multiple dimensions in this world multiple timelines uh, Are people escaping from different dimensions different times and coming here? Is there one chosen undead from each dimension? Uh, I don't know, but these are sorts of things that kind of you can read from this uh he it's also really interesting too that he says there are actually two bells of awakening he, he actually he says actually two bells of awakening it's as if he knows the legend he knows the story that you have to ring the bell of awakening if i remember right last time didn't oscar tell us to ring the bell of awakening and now this guy's like well actually there's two uh i'm not sure I, by the way fly get off of my mic Let's chat him up again and see what he has to say. Ah, your face. You're practically hollow. I don't know. Going hollow could solve quite a bit. <laughs> mm, what? Restoring your humanity? Well, there are a few ways to go about it. Collect it bit by bit from corpses. Or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned. And the quickest way, although I never do it, is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity. Coveting thy neighbor is only human, after all. <laughs> uh, very intriguing that he says, uh, although I never do it in such a way to kind of lead you to believe that he would actually do it and it could be seen as a little bit of foreshadowing for what happens with him a bit later in the game what are you looking at don't try anything clever you might regret it and it's also fun that he says that line immediately after telling you that you can kill a healthy undead and get their humanity to restore your own and then immediately after telling that, he's like, oh, wait, no, not me. <laughs> mm -hmm. What? You want to hear more? Oh, that's all we need. Another inquisitive soul. Well, listen carefully, then. 
One of the bells is up above in the undead church, but the lift is broken. You have to climb the stairs up the ruins and access the undead burrow through the waterway. The other bell is back down below the undead burg, within the plague-infested blight town. But I die again before I step foot in that cesspool. <laughs> so he knows about blight town, and we he's confirmed that he's died before. I mean, not really too big of a surprise for an undead, but it should, well, now that I think about it, that's also kind of an interesting little tip about him because he's in human form but he's confirmed that he's died he's died once he should kind of look like us unless he managed to restore his humanity so did he butter up a cleric or did he kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity uh, he has told us that we need to go up through the waterway into the undead burg if we want to access the undead church which is up there because the lift is broken or we could head down into Blight Town. We don't actually have the master key, so we can't get there through this this means. We have to go to the Undead Burg either way. Bloody hell, what is it now? You ask too many questions. Mm hmm? What now? I'm not up for chatting. Leave me alone. One final note about those dialogues that he just had he also it was really funny when he said oh that's all i need another inquisitive soul i wonder if he was talking about the sorcerer uh griggs isn't it griggs of venheim i don't know we'll see I, I don't know it could be interesting because he does know about the sorcerer's apprentice uh and he should mention him in a later dialogue three humanity originally it was not three humanity originally i think it was one is that right? Uh, they've patched the game a lot, uh, and it's basically gotten a little bit easier every patch. Here's another of our first NPCs to encounter. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thoroughland. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. He's got a knight's shield and the armor of a cleric. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. Given us a copper coin, we just picked up some humanity. Rare tiny black sprite found on corpses. This black sprite is called humanity, but little is known about its true nature. If the soul is the source of all life, then what distinguishes the humanity we hold within ourselves? Uh, perhaps this humanity is not the humanity that we hold within ourselves, but fragments itself of the dark soul. At least that's one line of thought for sure. Uh, let's see. He gave us coins, though. Coin made of copper. Its face shows Old Man McLoif, God of Medicine and Drink. Even coins of great value in the world of men have little value in Lordron, where the accepted currency is souls. Those who dream of returning to the outside world are fond of carrying these around. So, through the act of giving it to us, is he indicating that he no longer wants to return to the outside world? Plus, is this a coin of value? Oh my, you again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? That is a shame. But each to their own. Speak to me if you have a change of heart. Oh, hello. What is it? Have you changed your mind? Very well. Then first, a covenant with the gods. Now let me share my miracles. Only their ultimate effectiveness will be determined by your efforts and your faith. So he's Petrus of Thurland. Uh, Thurland is a land... Uh, 
apparently far from here. Great Heal excerpt borrows from only several verses of Great Heal. As a result, it can only be cast a, f a stark few times. Homeward, Great Miracle cast by Advanced Clerics. Would normally link to one's homeland, only the curse of the undead has distorted its power, redirecting casters to a bonfire. Or perhaps, for undead, this serves as home. The undead belong in the fire, perhaps. Interesting that uh, clerics, or sorcerers or clerics, rather, can actually use miracles to teleport. <laughs> can actually teleport around the world. Force. Common miracle amongst cleric knights. This quickly, quickly acting, I guess they mean quick acting miracle, inflicts no damage but propels foes back and defends against arrows. Cleric knights use this miracle when charging into enemy mobs, so the cleric knights are fighting quite a bit. Miracles of clerics on an undead mission. Display more guidance from other worlds. Guidance facilitates communication between undead, but their value varies greatly. A balance of wisdom and faith is required, and that's that's very very important right there. Fiz wait, f f f faith and wisdom. Uh, let's see. To cast a miracle, the caster learns a tale of the gods and says a prayer to be blessed by its revelations. Heal is the shortest of such miraculous tales. Uh, the Thorlin Talisman is actually the most interesting lore that he has here, I think. Uh, standard... This is... Wait, that's the talisman. Here's the Thurlan talisman. Medium for casting miracles of the gods. This talisman is only granted to high-ranking Thurlan clerics. Has high miracle adjustment, which, thanks to divine protection, is not dependent upon faith. Interesting that high-ranking clerics don't need faith in the gods. Uh, and also interesting that this is only granted to high-ranking Thurlan clerics, and he's just straight up selling it to us for 5,000 souls. A little bit of... About his nature, I suppose and the standard talisman. He doesn't teach us how to pray, he teaches us how to shrug. My companions are Milady and her young knights. She is young, but burdened by an undead mission. We are her defenses to keep her from harm. An undead mission? Regrettably, I cannot share that with you. But you are my pupil. Perhaps, if you show your faith. Now this cost actually scales with your level, so there's no real purpose in getting this dialogue, but if you just want to get the dialogue, I recommend doing it as soon as possible, before you level up. Very well. I can surely tell you, of all people, undead clerics are given a mission to seek kindling. Kindling is the art of feeding bonfires with humanity. Through kindling, we shall one day be granted magnificent powers. Come again. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. Uh, interesting there that undead clerics are given a mission. Uh, there are many clerics uh, that are not undead, apparently, and undead clerics are sent here to Lordran on a mission to seek kindling. That's kind of the way the, the Church of Thurland's actually operating here. Uh, we also, we are now a member of the Way of White Covenant. Let's see, right here. Yeah, Way of White Covenant. Uh, I kind of see it as being associated with Thurland. And one important point is the name Gwyn apparently means white. So uh, the Way of White can also be interpreted as being the Covenant of Gwyn. Very intriguing stuff. Now, let's explore Firelink Shrine a little bit. There's there's some treasures here that are important to us uh, in getting our character started, but also in terms of learning a little bit more about what's going on here, particularly with Petrus. See, this is where the lift is broken that the guy told us about, and we're gonna hop down here, and we went down now. We hop down here. And we find a little secret treasure chat, a uh, treasure trash, treasure cache. Uh, something interesting about this: most of the treasures around here are just lying on corpses. But these are actually stashed away in a box, in boxes, as if they've actually been specifically put here. And we find some homeward bones, very useful. Uh, bone bonfires are fueled by bones of the undead. So right there, you. Now you know what's, what's making these bonfires. In rare cases, the strong urge of their previous owners to seek bonfires enchants their bones with a homeward instinct. Bonfires are burning off the bones of the undead and can be strengthened through burning humanity. 
Morning Star and Talisman, just like what old Petrus was using. So this appears to be a cleric's little stash down here. And if we open this chest, cracked red eye orbs. So if this is a cleric's stash and this is actually Petrus's stash, then he's not what he seems, right? The Cracked Red Eye Orb allows players to temporarily imitate this ability normally limited to the Dark Wraiths of Kath. So we were learning about the Dark Wraiths for the first time here of Kath and invading other worlds to acquire humanity. But this doesn't really seem like the sort of thing that a member of the Way of White that a cleric should do, right? So... And is this really a cleric stash? Well, here's further evidence that it is. We get these Lloyd Talismans. Lloyd's talismans are uh, utilized by all Father Lloyd's cleric knights to hunt down the undead. Blocks Estus recovery within a limited area. In the outside world, the undead are accursed creatures, and Lloyd's cleric knights are widely praised for their undead hunts. This blessed talisman blocks undead recovery, allowing the knights to fight with impunity. So, in the first place, all Father Lloyd is kind of a god of the pantheon there, and we'll get more evidence for this uh, from a coin later, I believe. He has these cleric knights that hunt these uh, undead. What do you call it? A pogrom? I'm not sure. Uh, they're Basically, they are hunting up the undead. Uh, killing them, I suppose, but you can't kill them for long. So maybe this is how the undead are actually getting in the asylums. Maybe it's it's uh, the Church of Thurland. Maybe it's the Way of White. Don't know. Uh, maybe Lloyd's Knights here. Another thing, they're widely praised for their undead hunts. So the general populace likes it. And I guess that would help establish or help keep the theocracy and power in Thoroughland if that's the case but uh, yeah undead are accursed creatures now this is kind of an interesting little little thing to deal with right here because uh, in the original game these guys These guys were... Oh! There we go. Unkillable at this... Well, I, I, if I remember correctly, I think these guys were immortal. Uh, and it, it led to a lot of grief for a lot of players. If you hit them with a strong attack, they fall apart like that. Um, but here we can actually kill them, and I, I think this is something that was actually patched into the game. The ability to go ahead and permanently kill these skeletons here. Do they both trigger, or can I just get one? Nope, they both trigger. Well, fuck it up. Ah! He got me. Hit me hard, too. Whoa! Estus is slow, so slow to use. Come on. Come on. Oh shit, he got me with it. Come on now. Don't be that way. Oh, I locked on the wrong one. As soon as I tried to lock on, I locked on the wrong one. I tend to not use lock on too much. Just manually target my enemies. And when it's just one of them, it's no big deal, but uh, yeah. It, it's actually pretty good that they made these to where they don't respawn because the only reason they should respawn at all is because of the influence of a necromancer and there's no necromancer nearby to be associated with them. But it, it caused problems for people when the game first launched, I, I promise you. <laughs> so many butthurt forum posts about that, man. People were not happy. Alright, now we're gonna make the graveyard run. Let's go through here and pick up some cool little items. That path to the left leads to an area that we don't need to get to just yet. We can get our Zweihinder here. We can get another weapon that a lot of folks like. The winged spear we can pick up right there. And now, I'm gonna run down here and get this shield as well. I can't remember if it's Caduceus or Caducius. I think it's probably Caduceus. And if I can, try to get the binoculars without dying. If I can. 
doesn't really matter if we do or we don't, but... Oh, those big guys. They hit hard. So I just kind of lured them out of position. Fighting them, you can kill them, uh, but fighting them at this point, it's kind of... It's futile. I hope the skellies aren't still following me because I'm going to run over here and grab this while we're here. A lot of people tend to forget this treasure. I often tend to forget it. I don't want to jump over there. Maybe you could be alright if you do it, but... God damn it, they're still following me. Hold on. Let me interact with a bonfire. There we go. That'll reset the enemy's position and now I won't have to worry about dealing with them. While I show this area. This... First of all, this chest is always empty. Apparently, if you are able to somehow glitch the game and drop an item that you need in order to progress, it will appear in this chest. Apparently. I've never seen it happen myself. I've never managed to get rid of those items, but that's a safeguard. Uh, this statue right here actually was originally intended to be a path down below Firelink Shrine uh, in early concept works anyway. There's early concept artwork of uh, actually Andre of Astora moving this to the side and allowing the player to access lower paths. Um, we'll talk more about Andre, but his his basic overall role in the story uh, changed a lot from early concepts to the final game. And uh, yeah, we'll just talk about it when we get there. And here we see the crow that actually brought us here. Fucking awesome crow. Let's see. Have I got all the treasures? I think I've gotten all of the treasures from Firelink. Let's see. Let's check our weapons. It's Zweihander, one of the gigantic straight great swords. It's actually an ultra great sword. As the name suggests, the Zweihander is held with two hands, but its wielder must be it must still be inhumanly strong. It is this great weight that sends flows flying when hit solidly. Interesting that we have a number on inhumanly strong. If you have 24 strength, <laughs> you are inhumanly strong. Uh, the Morning Star is one of the more, bar more barbaric cleric weapons. And the Winged Spear, uh, just a spear that can actually do counter hits. Uh, something to note, actually, let me check that again so I can talk about the counter hit system. Effective against hard exteriors and hits for high damage at the right moment of an enemy swing. So if you hit an enemy at, with the correct timing during their attack with a thrust, it can only be a thrusting type attack, they'll take additional damage. Now, the winged spear does thrusting attacks, like if we two hand it, still thrusts, right? So all of its attacks are gonna do that. And you can see too that it says attack type thrust. Uh, the Morning Star can't do counter hits because it only does strike type attacks, but if you take a weapon like the Long Sword, for example, it has regular slash thrust. So this is a regular attack, it's not going to do counter damage. The R2 is a thrusting attack and will do counter hit damage if we strike the enemy just right. And I'll try to demonstrate that as we as we continue playing. Just wanted to talk about that system because it's one of those, it's one of the uh, less well understood systems, I guess, by by general players. I think I think a lot of people get it these days, but uh, originally the Leo ring didn't see a lot of use because uh, just the community just didn't understand how counter hits worked. And it took a lot of testing for us to kind of figure that stuff out. No, no, not my humanity. Oh, well. I wanted to use my large soul of a lost undead. Go ahead and level up a little bit. There we go. And level up. Let's see. I think we want endurance. Get our endurance first. So that we got plenty of stamina. And can I wear my helmet yet? Yes. I, no, I can't. Fuck. <laughs> it takes it a moment to up, update your, uh, your weight. This is a resonance ring. A lot of people may not actually know what this is. When you're in certain covenants, particularly the Way of White is one of those covenants, 
you'll see those resonance rings pop up, and if you cast certain miracles while near them, the miracle's effectiveness will be increased. Uh, I, that's something that people who don't play online probably have never encountered before, but interesting. And the last thing before we leave Firelink Shrine is to note that there appears to be a woman imprisoned below the bonfire. No response. She cannot speak. She could reinforce our Estus Flask, but we would need a Firekeeper Soul. And if we try to talk, she just doesn't. Because she can't. Alright, I think I covered everything in Firelink Shrine. Except... Try rear. It's it's a butt sex joke, people, because of the corpses. Yeah, it's a necrophiliac butt sex butt sex joke. That's just not cool. Uh, one last thing to show is that if you jump into this well, you will die. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in the next episode. I know it's a little bit shorter than you probably wanted, but I'm trying to keep it one video for an area. And right now, I'm honestly struggling with my internet. Uh, my internet and I'm also trying to prepare to move too so I am struggling for time guys I will catch you on the next episode of From the Dark and yes we are going to be this fucking thorough as we go through the whole fucking game later y'all we'll do the thing we gotta do the thing and do the thing <laughs>